You're listening to Barbell Logic, brought to you by Barbell Logic Online Coaching, where each week we take a systematic walk through strength training and the refining power of voluntary hardship. Welcome to the Barbell Logic Podcast. I'm Scott Hambrick, and that over there is Matt Reynolds, and it's question and answer Thursday in the plague year of 2020. Let's talk about where that mustache went. Couldn't get decide to get rid of it, huh? Or did it get oh, crabs? I hated it from jump. Oh, really? Why did you grow it? Because my Just, wife, my wife said I have never until I grew that mustache. I don't think I'd ever gone more than about four days without shaving. And uh, sometime before Christmas, again, no. Charity's like, "I wonder what you'd look like with a mustache." I'm like, "I don't wonder." And she's like, "Well, I'd like that." I said, "All right." <laughs> and uh, uh, listen, if all you got to do to make your spouse happy is like. Grow some, some facial, facial hair. hair. Yeah. Good. Easy, and then, please. And then uh, she had had enough of that. So uh, she shaved it. Uh, we got on the went on the back porch, and she shaved it on Instagram Live yesterday. Oh, yeah? Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> and uh, uh, glad it's gone. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. I, I've shortened I, up the beard, too. I don't, it's I don't to be need that, that stuff. It's, it's nasty. Yeah, my wife, my wife hates it when my beard is long. So yeah, I'm glad. So I'm, I'm glad to be rid of it. Short. Uh, how are the uh, How are the uh, Reynolds ha- holding up over there? You'd... We're doing great, man. I I actually kind of I honestly I feel bad talking about it because I know people are struggling, but we're not, and I love it, and I love my family, and I love my home. You know, there's part of me that I've seen some stuff on. I saw a post the other day on Twitter, I think, where somebody you know, there's all these people complaining about what it's like, and like you know, God, I'm stuck in my home, and it's like, well your home like you made it that way you know yep i love my home you know i got my office and i got my i got a great kitchen with good food and i've you know i got my chairs that are comfortable i got my whiskey collection i got my library i got everything i need in my house i got my wife and my kids i like them too i actually like my wife and kids what if you hate your old lady what if your house sucks what if you're fucking terrible you know or what if you live in manhattan in a 350 square foot apartment you know i mean that's that part sucks but yep um, so yeah, I don't know. I, 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 there's a, <laughs> I don't know that I should be guilty, but I feel a little bit of guilt even saying like, man, we're great. Honestly, great. And it's spring and it's beautiful. And the yard's nice. We've been working in the yard. I'm putting down a raised bed garden tomorrow. I'm pretty excited about that. I've never done a raised bed garden. We, we've done, um, container gardens. Sometimes I call them pot gardens, but then that's confused with what I'm actually growing. I'm putting things in a pot as opposed to growing the marijuana. And so uh, we're doing some raised bed gardens tomorrow. I got myself a composter. I've been composting. You should go look so, in there. It's not. It, it ain't great. It smells a little weird. But I keep on put a little more put a little more dry in. So that's my shout out to Jordan Gross, one of my buddies who uh, is a client of, of Barbell Logic. He's he's like, get yourself a composter. He he was an NFL player, retired from the NFL, moved to, back to his little bitty hometown in Idaho. And he has this great organic garden now. They do like a CSA for the locals and stuff. And great garden. I went and hung out with him. He's got this, you know, incredible greenhouse. And um, so anyway, so I'm I'm doing a garden, which I've done them before. I like gardens. And last Relax time we had me. spoken, uh, you said Rachel had tested positive for whatever the hell this is. And uh, she's all right. Never had a symptom. Other than the one weird symptom is with coronavirus is a, uh, which most people aren't talking about because the least severe is sort of a loss of taste and smell. Mm-hmm. And well, that's working to your that. advantage. That's to your advantage. <laughs> so yeah, I haven't showered in in uh, two weeks, but uh, no, it's uh, that's it, man. That's really all she had. She maybe a little bit of a le- little more lethargic than normal, but like how you know what is what is lethargy? Is that mm-hmm. the word? Yeah. What is lethargy? You know, other than like pr- maybe placebo. Like, if right. you know you have coronavirus, you're like, boy, sure, I feel like I'm a little more tired today. I feel like I might die. I mean, every other person that knows us, that saw us in the incubation period, knew that they had coronavirus. And in fact, they've all tested negative. So, right. you know, so if Rachel felt it. But no, she's fine. I'm fine. The health department, the CDC released us about 10 days ago now is officially cured. So we're in the officially cured stat. And... Springfield is in a lockdown for another 25 days, so there's really nowhere to go, but uh, I'm immune, so I can walk around like, you know, I'm just, I ought to go give blood or something. 
<laughs> we don't want it. Yuck. It's immune. It's immune blood. Right, right, right. No, I wasn't even talking about that. <laughs> You're just talking about all the other <laughs> it's stuff. It's just how nasty your blood is, right? <laughs> Man, Charlie, yeah. he says, he says, what do you think barbell coaching will look like in 10 years? 50 years. Okay. Hmm. 10 years, I don't think much, is, much will change. Uh, I think what he's probably getting at is, is there a time when some sort of AI is able to do some of the things that we do? And the answer is yes, of course. I don't want to be the steel industry in the 1970s saying, like, it's never going to change. It's going to come back. It's uh, There is uh, certainly some of the, you know, the, we, we are biomechanics people. We coach a lot of biomechanics. And that can be automated. But what cannot be automated is all the personal interaction that we do. We we play, uh, not to be disrespectful to somebody like Pewter, but we basically we, pay, we play psychiatrist on a daily basis with our clients, and we are a long way away from a from a computer being able to do that. So do I think that there will be a time when you will be able to have an app on your phone that the cameras are in 3D, which we don't really have yet, but you know the new iPhones have three cameras, so we're not that far away from a technology standpoint to be able to read depth of field where you could squat and there's sort of a standard for a squat and the thing tells you how close you are to 100%. You know, that was 94% accurate. It was a 94% accurate squat. Do I think that is coming in the next 10 years? Yep. But do I think that replaces coaches? No. Not, no. not, not people who are good at service. Well, not even good at coaching. You know, if you get, like if I got a, if I had the best possible AI coaching application watching my squat and it tells me that's an 83% do this. Like, how is it going to pick a, a cue or change, change, you know, something about the thing? Like sure. we've decided that I need to squat extra low bar, right? Because this kyphotic right. thing, yeah. H- how are you going to program an AI to do that? Yeah. It's, gonna it's, be very just, it's just not going to happen. I have one thing to say about AIs. Yeah. All right. You can just sit back. It's going to take an hour. Perfect. Um, what if What if the human mind is the most complicated uh, possible machine that could ever be created? That could ever be created. That's right. I mean, it certainly is the most complicated machine probably at the moment. But yeah. Is it? What, if that's the, what if that's the pinnacle? Like there's this idea of progress. Sure. And that it just never ends. And sure. we're, we're, a lot of us are familiar with the infinite regress paradox like, uh, you know, what moved the mover? Well, something else. Well, what moved that mover? And you, you get sure. back to the point that there has to be a prime mover. We have an infinite regress logical conundrum. Well, there's yep. also an infinite progress logical conundrum. And everybody seems to think that that's just going to go on forever and ever and ever. But I uh, I don't think so. And, uh, yep. and I, I think you'd be hard-pressed to create a more elegant, more functional, more flexible um, machine than the human, and uh, don't be fooled by this AI stuff. It will come with enormous, enormous uh, trade-offs that are not worth it. Yep. Yeah, and I think that sometimes we say AI, and what we really mean is probably automation, which Al- you would also, yeah, which you would probably also argue there's there's certainly still some um, some consequences to. But I I do think that there's probably some automation that will occur over time in coaching and I think it will be helpful and I think it'll be probably at some point especially for the good coaches will be looked at as a tool for the good coaches not as a competition for the good coaches um, but man we are so far away if you've read stuff on AI we're a long way away from that stuff like that you know It'll ne- it's never going to happen we're yeah we're it's scratching the surface you know it, so. and by the way you know an algorithm you know is some complex program that says if this then that is not artificial intelligence. You know, you can yep. you can program something that says, you know, if you see the following preconditions, this is the output you do. And then yep. that can be really complex, but it's not an artificial intelligence. And uh, yep. um, I, I, I don't believe there can be another intelligence. I think there's a divine spark in the human that cannot be replicated. And that when you fuck around with that, when you're Promethean stuff, uh, you will get outcomes that you did not want. Yep. Hey, are you going to read another question? Uh, not unless you have something interesting to say. <laughs> well, I just wanted to, I, I, I do, I do actually, I should have done this at the beginning of the show. Um, Hey man, we lost a buddy this week and um, 
I'm gonna get emotional about it. Um, Forget about that. Lost my first first guy that's worked for me, uh, Peter Nathan, and um, it was very quiet, very private. Um, talked to him about on the talked about him on the podcast here. Um, I coached Peter for a couple of years uh, in person, and he was a coach for us from the very beginning at Barbell Logic. And a few months ago, he um, he quit, he resigned, and um, and it was sort of out of nowhere. And he said, "Hey, it doesn't have to do anything with any of the politics and strength coaching or any of that kind of stuff." Uh, he said, "I just got some health issues I have to deal with," and um, and I emailed um, our leadership team, and I was like, "You know." He's a quiet guy and he's private and um, worried that that, but that was that was the way he lived life. I, he was in his early 60s, 60, 60, 61, somewhere in that ballpark. Sixty, he was. He was in his early sixties. No, he wasn't. I, th- I, you may be right. I Is think he, he was closer think, to seventy. Yeah, was he? I think so. Uh, well, Doesn't he matter. was. He was awesome. He was a phenomenal lifter. He went to the CrossFit Games several years and and placed in the Masters uh, divisions. He was a. He was a champion uh, weightlifter, uh, like like snatch and clean and jerk. A uh, very good powerlifter, um, and was a hell of a coach. And um, but he had cancer, and um, and in his private sort of way, he passed uh, with his family at his bedside a few days ago. And so I just want to give my condolences. And his wife reached out to me yesterday. We we had sent we planted a tree and stuff in his name and done some stuff. And she just sent a, a really nice uh, word. And so I I wanted to just pass on my condolences to the family of Peter Nathan. He will be missed. He was a great coach and a great lifter and a great person. And uh, everything I know about him, he was a, a great husband and father. And he was one of the guys that introduced you to this. Isn't yeah. He? Yeah. He was, uh, yeah, the first, uh, first gym I went to that was in our, uh, kind of in our community was his Gardner Strength and Conditioning up there in upstate New York. And, uh, um, and met him there, and Kelly Nielsen had coached Charity and I up there. And uh, he's just, he was just a gentleman, a man of style. Yeah, dressed uh, awesome. Yeah, uh, dressed like it was like the 1930s or 1940s. He would wear a hat and a you know and a suit jacket and a vest and things like that. He he dressed like a high end boxing gym owner from 1938. Oh, that's true. That's yeah, that's a great. He would way wear to like a like like a silk uh, athletic jacket, a little snap brim hat, like penny loafers, yep. and jeans with a cuff on them. Just cool as hell, smart as a whip, uh, a gentleman. Uh, he was a a competitive ballroom dancer. Oh yeah, that's right. You know, and uh, I, he was just a, Renaissance he was an, man. Yeah, he was an athlete and just a fine guy. And was, uh, was. was sad to hear him go. But uh, I think I think he sounded to me like he did it uh, his way as best he could. In, yeah, uh, I agree. in his in privacy, and uh, that was Peter Nathan. And the world's a lesser place without him. That's exactly right. Yeah. That's exactly right. Uh, yeah. It's always weird to transition into a question. I Indian know now, clubs. He was like into those Indian clubs, you know. Oh like, man, his gym was awesome. He had this uh, <laughs> like a museum of strength. In, it was like a, I think it was like a, uh, like a a garage. Uh, what's it called? The garage is separate from the house. What's that called? Just like a a garage. You know, it was a, <laughs> I know, but it was its own. But it was a, it had all this like the inside of the garage was wood, like yeah. it was wood and it was like cool wood, and so um, it just had this great throwback feel. And then he had incredible equipment because. When he closed down his gym, he brought all that gym equipment into his garage. So he had he had old school Indian clubs hanging on this wood wall, and he had. But he, I mean, the guy had like uh, you know like the ER racks, like the competitive racks, and all the all the cool equipment. Really nice high end equipment that he would train on, and yeah, Antique just a maces, pleasure to work with. You know, for like strength training and just all kinds of interesting stuff. Yeah, great guy. You know, uh, and I, it's, I, it's, I hope this comes across okay. You, you've you've been a business owner. You were a business owner for years. You still are a business owner. And one of the things that I will say about about Peter is, as a as an owner, especially with a with a pretty large staff, it is always nice to have a person who works for you that just does her job and keeps her head down and never creates any drama or turmoil. And that was that was Peter. He just did an awesome job. Great service, took care of his clients, never stirred up drama, never had any problems, you know, never had to like, oh, I got a problem with payroll or, oh, I can't, you know, I got to change my bank account to a different, like none, nothing like that. He was just awesome, did his job, low maintenance, and he was an incredible coach and an incredible lifter. And uh, so he will be missed. Yeah, he had experience, you know, dating back to this late 50s and 60s yeah it, yeah it's 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 a bad deal he's it's unmatched. but you know what yeah we can't do it forever no we cannot you know, we don't live forever uh, we cannot bernie what a mm. bummer all this shit is 
Bar- B- Bernie says, could you guys comment on using pre-workouts and creatine supplements? Hey, if your name was Bernie, wouldn't you wouldn't you go as Bernard or something? Not Bernie. Burn. You would go as Burn? I have no I idea. Not. I, I just I, I can't even imagine Bernard having that having that name. Not that there's anything wrong with it. It's just I Yeah, right. Right. So he wants to know about pre workouts and cre- pre workout supplements and creatine. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Well, one is proven to work and one is not. <laughs> There's the there's the end. creatine is something that is a an energy systems product that helps your muscle fibers store more uh, nutrients basically for this is dumbed down and I'm sorry for you nutritionists and and uh, and chemists yeah that's it though but that's pretty much what it is right they're yeah. allowed to when when your muscles that they they creatine is a naturally occurring product in uh, red muscle cells in mu- muscle cells in general of animals and humans. And uh, it's hard to eat enough to be able to supplement enough to get enough to kind of max that out in your storage capacity. But when you have creatine available in your muscle cells, your muscles will store more um, more water and more uh, salt and electrolytes, creatine, and will also tend to have a little more energy in the sort sort of stored energy pool to be used uh, when you're doing those heavy, hard sets. And so that's why we use creatine. Pre-workout is a whole nother gig. Pre-workout is uh, typically a combination between caffeine or some sort of stimulant, which works fine and makes you certainly makes you feel like it works, and most of us drink coffee or whatever before we work out, and some sort of vasodilator that allows you to get more blood flow into your body. Well, right? it'll be now, caffeine, and it's often niacin. Which yeah, makes your correct. face all flushed. Yeah, it's, it's just it just makes you get, feel weird. Kind of burns and itches. And then I'll tell you this: I don't I don't know if I'm speak for you. It causes me tremendous gastrointestinal problems. Yeah, if Give I you take the, a, a, the the heavier sort of pre workouts that there are, twenty minutes in my workout, I'm running to the bathroom, and the I, and I don't know what it is. It's probably the know, caffeine, right? Caffeine? Yeah, it could be the caffeine. I drink caffeine all, all the time. I mean, yeah, I drink two, boy. three, four cups of coffee every morning, but I do poop four times before 8 a.m. So maybe, maybe that's right, in fact. Who knows? Yeah. Uh, I think there's something to be said for the caffeine. Uh, I don't know that you need sure. the niacin or any of that stuff. And so uh, the, the pre-workouts are really expensive. Mm-hmm. And if there's anything in them that's helpful, I think it's the niacin. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I think, I think it's, it's the caffeine. caffeine. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, not a doctor, not a nutritionist. I don't know any about any of that stuff. But my hunch, as a thinking guy, is that you're way better off. And this is what I do: I go buy like a hundred pack of those caffeine tabs on Amazon for like four bucks, yeah. and eat the two no of those. those. Eat two of those, and then go train. Yeah, I I am too. That it, that stuff will wire me like I smoke crack. So I I'd, I'd rather just have a cup of coffee and. And be done with it. It's good enough. Feels fine. We make a pot of coffee and take it out in the gym and drink a pot of coffee while we train. Oh, I know. Just training, hammer yeah. so tra- I love to. <laughs> you pop the caffeine pills and drink the coffee. Maybe. I do have a favorite vasodilator, however. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's called Cialis, and it works fin- fantastically. I don't necessarily use it pre-workout. Um, it's got a fairly long hi- half-life, but right. it gets the job done for what I need it to do. What's it done for your squat? It you know it's a vasodilator. It brings a little <laughs> extra blood flow. <laughs> M- Michelle says, "It's Michelle again, your twelfth female listener." Hey, Michelle, toast but, to you. Uh, this is this is a longer one, but I think it's a good one. In fact, well, here we go. Twelfth female listener, fifty six years old, still an LP, doing a four day split to give my body more time to recover. Love the four day split. She said, "Listen to episode ten, the secrets of maximizing linear progression, and other references in the podcast about the end of LP." I'm hoping you do another episode or Q and A with more details about what programming is like at the end of LP. Uh, we've done a lot of that. We've done a lot of it, Michelle. But I care for you very much, and we're going to do more right now. She's uh, she's moved from three by five on most things to five by three. Again, this is a fifty six okay. year old lady, so that's a, sure. that's a good thing to do. She yep. says, uh, "I think where you lost me was when the two of you were quickly talking about doing a heavy set." then back offsets, or doing five by three one time, and then three by five the next, or doing heavy singles or doubles. I can't picture what the programming would look like for someone like me. Can you tell us newbies more about programming options to continue to drive adaptation and build muscle when you're no longer able to add weight to the bar every training session? You want me to answer that? I can well, I think answer. we I mean, both can. Yeah, we could We could do it pretty easy. It's, um, that's a, it's a great question. 
And what you have to do is you have to get your stress. You probably continue, you're probably you going to continue to get your stress one time a week. So if you're doing a four-day split, you're doing all the lifts twice a week. One time a week, you're going to get that, continue to get that stress from intensity. So you're going to continue to go as heavy as you can. And that might be a set, one set. So instead of five sets of three, what you could do is one set of three heavy and then back off 5%, 10%, 8%. And do four more sets of three. So that the top set is the heaviest set, but the other sets are pretty damn heavy too. But then the other day of the week, you you can get some volume in. And that volume could be three sets of five. It could be four sets of five. It could be five sets of five. My suggestion would be to start with less and see if it works. And if it does, stay with it. And when it starts to slow down, you'll add a little more volume. So that one time a week you make sure that the volume or the tonnage goes up. And the tonnage is just a a mathematical equation of the weight times the sets times the reps. If the tonnage goes up on the volume day and the weight continues to go up on the intensity day, then you will continue to make progress. And that's probably the next step for you out of basic four-day LP. Would you agree? I I do. So as a practical matter, ma'am, you've been doing five-by-threes. Let's talk about the bench press, just because we have to talk about something. Sure. You'd be doing five by threes. And maybe you can go three, 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 two, one. You've run that out. It's not working anymore. Right. And, and in fact, she writes here 88 pounds was where that happened to her. So what I would have you do. So here's a way that you might do your back offs. 88 pounds is your PR. Let's do one by three next time for 89 pounds. Yep. Or maybe 90, but you get the point, right? That one's going to be a PR for you. Go back and look at your book at the last thing you did for 3 by 5 Your 3 by 5 record. Bump that a couple pounds and do it for one five. That's your back off. Yeah. If you don't get 5 and you get 4, that's just fine. That's just fine. And then the next time you bench press... Uh, you're going to press first, and then you're going to bench press. And then you can go get a 3x4, a 3x5, a 4x4, a 5x3, a 5x4, five, a 5x5. Five five, something. More volume, and it's going to be a little lighter than your back-offs were on your first bench press day of the week. There you go. Yes. There you go. Now, next week you're going to go in. Now, remember, we bumped it to 89 for a triple Next week, you're going to go in, and let's say you get 90 next week for a double. The volume work you did probably wasn't heavy enough. That's okay. We had to start somewhere, right? It probably wasn't heavy enough or it wasn't enough volume. That's okay. Don't worry about it. Bump that up. So now we're on the second Thursday, let's say, of our new regime. Now we're going to go back in Monday. We're going to bench press again. We're going to try that 89 for a triple again. Or 90. I'm sorry, 90 for a triple. Heck, maybe you miss it again. It's okay. Bump the volume on Thursday again. Yep. Eventually, everything will kind of titrate in. It'll be where it needs to be. And you'll, you'll, your, uh, your heavy triple on your Mondays will start moving up. Be patient with it. Make those little bitty changes. And it'll all, it'll all be okay. Yep. There I you agreed. have it. Later I on. Agree. You're going to have to take the same kind of thought process that I just outlined there, and you're going to have to extend that over two weeks, and then later three or four weeks, and then so on. But, but don't you, confuse her. Yeah, but you first can go— First step first. What, we, what Matt and I just outlined should be helpful to you for now, and uh, you can go for check out those uh, MED Masterclass episodes that Matt did and the two shows I did about how I troubleshoot that stuff to kind of get a path forward um, when, you're, when you're week-long stuff— uh, hey, can I steam. tease out really fast? Just a, This is a very early tease, but it's always good to tease some stuff out. So um, I, you had done some of this already. We can talk more about this, but I officially transcribed very good higher-end transcription of the MED Masterclass and the programming um, podcast we've done, and we are building the manuscript for the MED programming book. Mm. And we expect the manuscript for that to be done. Nick Solin's going to help us with that. 
Um, we expect that to be done in three months, the manuscript. And then, of course, we'll have to do the design layout and what and whatnot. But it, the goal right now is to have it up for sale by August, somewhere there. Think I can do it by then? No fucking way. Let's shoot for Hold it. Hold on. <laughs> do you want to? Should we bet? Can we gamble? But I get till August thirty first. I get the whole month. Yeah, it's it's unlikely. No chance. I'm not trying to poop on you. I mean, I hope so. No, no, no like, it's hard. Hey, I let's get go. It, I'm, it's, I'm in. I'll help. We, we just we just have so much content already made that uh, we'll see. We'll see. All right. So there you go. There's a tease. MED book on its way out. Working on it. We've put the wheels in motion. Not we're not just talking about it. We're working on it big time. Pete, Pete says. Thanks for everything you guys do. Love the podcast. I've been trying to stick with training for years now. I finally built a little momentum, uh, which is helped by all the good information you guys offer it for free. For free. Thank you. He says, my question has to do with shoulder slash back knots. I have some nasty shoulder and back knots from bad posture and stress that predate my strength training that now interfere with my strength. Ah, <sighs> etc. Yep. What do? I have that right now. What do? I've been do? in this damn chair for 13 hours a day. I've certainly had that problem uh, too. My posture is terrible, Pete. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I, I have that, you know, people talk about the foam roller and the lacrosse ball and all those things. And that ain't a bad thing to do. Uh, but for me, it's that Paul Horn stretch. It's uh, hanging from the bar, bar hangs, yeah, that. Uh, chins, heavy rows, he heavy those rows, were... rack pulls, heavy rack pulls, poop your pant rack yeah. pulls. <laughs> Poop your pants. You should put that in true coach. Yeah. Poop your pants rag pulls. Oh, I do. <laughs> uh, my, my my client Jason, who does pause squats, he'll do like four fours paused at like four eighty. He calls them pants shitters. Yeah, well, they are. Yeah. Um we mentioned the rack pulls, the barbell rows, hanging from the bar, the Paul Horn stretch. Also, um uh, hydrate, dude. There's a good chance you're dehydrated a little bit and you're not aware of it, you know. So drink a Gatorade and uh, eat your eat your nanners, and uh, but it might not ever be great. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. you know everybody acts like every problem can be fixed. Like if we pay attention to this and measure it and manage it, we can make get fix it, you know. But not everything can be fixed. If you're an older person and uh, you've had terrible posture for years and years and years, uh, you may struggle with this from time to time. It can get better. But sure. uh, from time to time, you're just going to have hell getting that bar on your back, and um, you're going to have – it's just going to be trouble. Uh, but, you know, do what you can. It'll be okay. Mark Mark says, I am in the master lifter class and have been doing the LP for about two months. My strength has increased as well as my health. The issue I'm having is constant shoulder pain, especially at night. I've stopped the press and the bench press for the last week, and the pain has subsided some. Would it be advisable to just squat, deadlift, and row? I've not led a genteel life, and my body has sustained lots of damage over the years. Thanks in advance, he says. Gosh, I don't have enough want, information, Mark. He, like, wrestles some tigers or something? Maybe. You haven't watched Joe Exotic, I assume. No. But you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, here's the problem with the shoulders, man, is that sometimes the squats, the thing that's jacking them yep. up. And so you can't just get rid of the press and the bench. What you're doing is you're reducing the stress on the shoulder by getting rid of the press and the bench press, but it's possible that the actual cause of the problem is the squat. And so this actually relates to the last question, right? Doing those things like the Paul Horn stretch. Um, I saw that Paul Horn made a video the other day about this sort of thing, and he said if you're having that – he was talking about bicep tendonitis, but if you're having shoulder or elbow tendonitis or problems – then it's not a bad idea to press or bench press first in the workout. That's what he said. And then squat second and deadlift third. Yeah. I've never done that. I'm, how great, funny is that? It's, it's so idea. basic. Yeah. But like it makes sense because the squat tends to actually be the foundational problem. And then it gets exacerbated by the press or the bench press. And so he's like, well, just press or bench press first. And so. Yeah, Mark, the bicep has two ends, kind of, really three. <laughs> well, but it, right. Two, so it yeah. attaches down on your forearm. So it crosses the elbow, and then it also crosses your shoulder, and yeah. the proximal end of it kind of goes in your armpit, sort of. And if that bicep, if that end of the bicep tendon gets all mad, if you if you if you're kind of not familiar with this stuff and don't know what's up, 
you think you've got shoulder pain, but it could be biceps, proximal biceps tendonitis. Yeah. Long or short. But head. also there's a lot of stuff running between yep. that in that subacromial space between the bump on your shoulder, the acromion in the top in the head of your humerus. And so if it's pain in the back of your shoulder, that's often like the infraspinate spinatus. It gets uh, pinched back there. There are lots of stuff that can happen. And here's the deal. I, man, I've gotten to this. What's the name, Mark? Yeah. Mark, can I just shoot you straight for a minute? Mark, if you've got, if you're doing okay, you got a few hundred extra bucks, just get a buffalo bar or a duffalo bar or a safety. I like the buffalo bar slash duffalo bar better than the safety squat bar. But, man, for these Masters athletes, dude, Scott, I've been, why do they need to squat with a straight bar? I know. You know, and like I've moved a bunch of those guys that have similar problems to, to, to with the lower body to a box squat. So it's like 95% of the benefit with almost none of the risk. Just order order a, a bowed bar. Like if you, you know, yeah. you're, you're an old guy with beat up shoulders, you know, this guy's probably got stories. He probably played college football or something and threw footballs and had a slap tear when he was 19 years old Rodeo and never got it fixed. Or- I mean, you just don't have any idea, mm-hmm. right? And so I have been... That you know, you know, I know my clients, and if my clients have enough money to spend a few hundred bucks on a barbell, I'm like, look, this is worth it. Yeah, because you can either struggle with the pain. What would you pay to get rid of the pain? Would you pay a couple hundred bucks, two hundred fifty bucks, get yourself a barbell, get it. Yeah, you know, I told one of my clients that and I was like, hey, here's the cheapest buffalo bar on the market. It's at New York Barbells, by the way. New York Barbells is a great website. It's the one. Brett and Cooper talking about the other day that looks like it's from like 1993. Perfect. Like the website hasn't changed. It's nybarbells.com, I think is what it is, something like that. And uh, I told him to get that. And then he was like, I just went on uh, Kabuki and got the $700 right. Duffalo bars. <laughs> so it's, you know, the guy had the money to do the thing. So it's, anyway, get yourself a Bode bar uh, or a safety squat bar. It's a, that, that'll work as well. No, if you've got the it's money. Actually, if not, there's, there's things you can do. It is actually New York barbells. But, is uh, it? Yeah. Good. Look yeah, how awesome that side it. is. Yeah. Isn't that, awesome? Isn't that side awesome? It. It's all like. Yeah, yeah. I've got a client. Uh, I've got a client who's like 71. Safety squat bar every time. Who cares? Uh, he can't. Matter. That's he right. can't. His shoulders are so jacked up. He can't press directly over his midfoot and get his head yeah. through and lock out. We don't press. Who cares? I wish he yeah. could, but he's 71. And it's just, you know, it's just, it's not working. We can do, he can do what he can do. And we accept those things. David says, I have an arthritic shoulder. Oh my God. <laughs> that can bo- yeah. that can really bother me when benching. Previous dislocations and injuries of the shoulder seem to have caught up with me. Um, he says, the doctor suggested re- modifying the range of motion or switching to a neutral grip, which would put less strain. Uh, he said, I found that two board pressing seems to be less aggravating and been toying with the idea of a neutral grip bar. Would switching up to a neutral grip bar or running LP with board presses be acceptable? Yes. Yes. I actually agree with your doctor on both these. I hate those neutral grip bars. Not for a guy with shoulder like arthritis, not impingement. Right. Guy's got arthritis, right? right? So think about it. Like with my hip arthritis, there's everybody makes fun of my frog squat. There are there for if shoulder arthritis, it's the same sort of thing. There are there are positions you can put your hand and angles you can put your elbows yep. in that will stay clear. And it won't be bone on bone grind. So if that guy can get a, you know, it's a football bar, or a Swiss bar is what those are called. Some of them are a little bit angled handles, and some of them are literally perfectly neutral. I like both those bars. Um, same sort of deal. You know, the guy's never going to bench press, and a powerlifting meet doesn't matter. Uh, probably still needs to bench press. I think that that works fine. I would. Well, let me tell you this: if I had to choose between a neutral grip, full range of motion bench press. Or a two board press with a straight bar, I would take the full range of motion one. Okay. Now he may have to do both. He may have to two board press mm-hmm. with the neutral grip at some point. But I would always rather have range of motion than shorter range of motion. So the last thing that I'm going to cut, I learned that from Will Morris. I want to move. I want to make some changes and try to find a, a way to do the movement with full range of motion because it works more muscle mass if I can. And if I can't, then I'll start cutting down the range of motion. Right. That's when I start doing things like rack pulls and board presses and higher box squats or pin squats or things like that if you have different injuries. So I cut the range of motion last, but I don't. I think a two-board press is still a perfectly good movement. Yeah. And you can buy those weird foam things that snap around the bar and use that instead of holding bars there. Those things are wonderful. Yeah, that's true. That's those true. things are wonderful. And uh, yeah, there's nothing wrong with those, those Swiss bars. They're just, they're heavy yeah. and they're like, all of them are bad quality. They don't have like, 
I haven't seen any that had good bearings in them. I don't know. I, no, no, no. I don't they, have none of them problem. spin. I don't have any problem. They're, they're with like them a, they're basically like an axle, yeah. right? So they have no spin. There there isn't a collar that spins on. There's no there's no bearings. There's no bushings on any of those things for the most part. But uh, but again, it's not that big of a deal. So when I was saying I don't like them, that's what I mean. Just, I haven't seen. Yeah. I haven't seen. So a low, it's one. a low quality bar. Yeah, I haven't yeah. seen a good one. Uh, my client Jeff is a <laughs> in person client. He emails and says. Uh, he says, I got an argument about ab wheel rollouts. Was this with you? No. <laughs> the argument. He says, in the linked video, they talk about pelvic position in danger to the back. My peer says my back is in danger if I don't keep my pelvis rolled in, as stated in this video. I thought if it was right, blah, 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 blah. He says, am I crazy? I've been doing these for 20 years off and on and never had a back issue. <laughs> then you're fine. Yeah. So, you, yes, you are crazy because you do these. <laughs> And whether you have anterior or or posterior, posterior. pelvic tilt when you do uh, when you do rollouts is irrelevant. Yeah, a lot of people will say that uh, an over anterior pelvic tilt, which is where you're sticking your ass out, chicken butt, could be dangerous for this. But I tell you what, man, I've done this a lot. How many guys have you seen? How many males have you seen that have an over extension of the lumbar spine? It's pretty rare. No, but there's lots of women. No post. There's lots of women. No post pubescent guys. Right. Well, I mean, there's a few, but not very many. But like, there's there's a lot of ladies out there that have a lot more of that. So this will be more of something that sort of like neutral ab clamp down. Like, make sure you clamp your abs down. Is probably more beneficial for females than it is for men. It's hard to overextend your low back. Yes, there are outliers, but they're rare. So if you've been doing them for 20 years with no back problems whatsoever, you're just fine. Keep going. Except it's a crazy exercise, but. Whatever. Oh, here's a little field report. Yeah, Jeff, knock that shit off, by the way. Get your deadlift up. Like, what's an ab rollout going to do that your heavy deadlift's not going to do? I thought he was going to email and he was going to say, hey, do you know of a good coach in Tulsa, Oklahoma? (laughs) (laughs) Right. (laughs) Uh, Here's Katie. This is a little field report. Uh, She was our 20th female listener, she says. There we go. She says, your 20th female listener here. And I wanted to follow up on my question from last year about competing post eating disorder. And if you remember that, Matt, we we yep, I think I we told her, you know, maybe you shouldn't do that. Yep. You know, maybe you should talk to a sponsor. You know, maybe that wouldn't be the best idea for you right now. Yep. And she says, based on your advice and a lot of soul searching, I decided that competing on the platform is just not worth the possible risk to my recovery. And and and, and in this, she's talking about her recovery from an eating disorder, not training stress. Correct. Uh, Correct. She says, you both solidified my thought process about it, and I'm now at peace with my decision. I recently posted my story of recovery and lifting on thefitpharmacist.com. There you go. She says, um, thank you for your thoughtful advice and keep doing what you're doing. She says, no, I'll keep celebrating all the gifts that the barbell has given me. Well, that is, that sounds like good news. Uh, Best of luck to you in uh, your recovery. That's great. I think we said this when she originally wrote in, but but recovery from ED is like recovery from crystal meth. It almost is non-existent. And so if she's in a position where she is in recovery, I would change nothing. Stay in recovery. Like the yep. second you, you, you decide to compete, you've changed one of the variables and maybe you're not in recovery anymore. Right. Um, you know, well, I have a fair amount of background with eating disorders, not with myself other than Hmm. The fact that I overeat and overdrink, <laughs> not, 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 not the other way around. Uh, but uh, I've studied that quite a bit in the past, and that is a there is a, a high percentage relapse to those. So I would say if you are in recovery and it's going well, stay the course. That's more important than uh, adding 12 pounds to your squat. That's exactly right. Michelle, who was our 12th female listener that we just talked about, about LP, the end of LP. Amazing. She says, don't yell at me on the podcast, Hambrick. Since I emailed you, I dug through the podcast archives and found some episodes I had not listened to <laughs> and found the answer to That's my funny. question. <laughs> Thanks. There you go. I'm not going to yell at you, Michelle. Thank you. Thank you for listening, Michelle. Uh, let's do one more here from Robin. Uh, I found your podcast recently. I've fallen in love with it, mainly with your programming rants. I'm 23 and I've been lifting for four years consistently. It's become my biggest priority in life. Well, knock that shit off. Yeah. Like if that's go, your biggest priority in life, something's going to get go, married and have some kids. What's wrong? Do a good job. Put it about number four. It's not a bad spot to yeah, have. Yeah. Four to six. Four to six. It's somewhere in there. You, you know how much hatred I get because I said I don't like doing this stuff? You get a lot, but yeah. I bet there's a lot of people that identify with that. Of course there are. 
I just don't because I like it. Well, that's great. But I like I when it like gets dieting. Me. You know, how, does does anybody like chemotherapy? <laughs> no, that's that's you true. Know, people, it's medicine, man. People um, people are so weird. It's like how Hamber doesn't even like it. He goes on there and talks about it. I love what it gets us. I value it a great deal. I don't have to enjoy it. Right. So ridiculous. Uh, he says he's been in this for about four years. He's tried various DUP or block periodizations with numerous lifts and goals in mind. Um, but I've made some gains, to be honest. But I realize when I stall, there's not really a way for me to make my programming more complex. I basically skip novice and intermediate phrase, thinking complex equals better. It doesn't. Way to go for figuring that out, though. So he said, I decided yeah. to follow your philosophy and to restart my programming and do LP to see if I can still gain from that and then try to, uh, something like a Texas method. Now come my questions. How would you suggest to set LP for someone who's not a novice in a training age sense? I'm afraid I will detrain doing low volume. <sighs> yeah, you're probably fine. I, I understand why he thinks this way. And the answer, will he detrain a little bit? Maybe. But like in the long run, you, what you're doing is you're paying, you're going back and paying your dues. You know, this is like, I've thought a lot about finances lately. How many, I, I can't, I've answered a lot of questions lately with the markets being crazy of people who have massive amounts of debt and no money in the bank. And they're like, hey, the markets are crazy. How should I invest my money? And I said, paying off the debt, right? So here's a guy who's trying to, who's trying to do futures and options and shorts, but he hasn't, he hasn't paid off his debt and has have money in the bank account yet. And so, dude, you'll be fine. Just start conservative. Yeah. It, so listen, Robin later goes on to say that he's uh, 86 kilos, which is like 190 pounds. Uh, his squat's 132 kilos. Let me go ahead and translate that to 291. Yahtzee. That's not heavy enough to be on block or DUP. Uh, so he's go pressing like 140. He's benching 90 kilos. What is 90 kilos? That's 200 pounds. His yeah. deadlift is 330. Dude. So, dude, that's less than Scott and I's wives. That's, and, our, and our wives are like in their mid-40s. Yeah, you're not even close. And I'm not trying to be ugly to you. I'm not trying to be mean. No, same. You're not even close. This is ridiculous. So you need, to gain, you need to gain 15 pounds of body weight by eating too much protein. You need to go back and do your LP. And you will be amazed. And here's what, here's what I would wager to say. If you'll actually do that, You'll set all time PRs on on LP. Yeah. You'll set three by five PRs that you've never set before on any other type of programming on basic linear progression, four movements, maybe some chins, and nothing else. Like literally, that's it, man. He's and dude. By the way, you're 179 centimeters and 86 kilos, and he and he go, and he bothers to put 12 percent body fat in here. Your priorities are completely jacked that's up, right. top to bottom. You're five foot ten. You weigh like 190 pounds. You need to gain some more weight. Uh, yeah, your body fat needs to go up to 18%, 19% over the next few months. And then, and then you'll have time out. to cut it back down later. And and you're, uh, and it's your top priority, by the way. Like, if that's your top priority, you are... But you're a bad person. Yeah. No, you're not you a bad person. But, you're, but, but you've, you've, spun, you've spun your wheels a lot uh, at this point. And being 23... And working it for four years, it's it's time to really get focused and do it the right way. So work that LP, work that LP really hard. I need you to gain ten pounds or about five kilos in this LP, and then you you need to eke out what you can out of that week long programming there. And uh, you need to add twenty kilos of this three by five squat here. Pretty, yeah. I, I mean, you, you need to do that, and your upper body lifts are kind of not where they need to be. Uh, he said, I wouldn't go under 10 sets per body part in my training for years. No, you don't need to do... Look, you've been doing two 10 sets for four years and you aren't <laughs> strong. I was so proud of you for saying that you basically skipped the novice and interfa intermediate phase, thinking that complex equals better. Well, he's got, he has some self-awareness, so, which so, is a, you know, a step in the right direction. Good for you, but then you're worried about volume. The volume's not getting you anywhere. So, hey, let's, you know, let's knock that off, Robin. Let's knock that off. You'll be all right. Let us know what you're doing. Email me and let me know how you're doing. I'll help you in any way you can, any way I can. But um, there's there's much, much improvement ahead of you, F frankly, without a lot of work. I mean, yeah. really, let's just be sensible and uh, and get on it. Yeah. It's very simple and it's not not complex and you've got to eat uh, more food, more protein. That's it. Oh my god. Hey, uh I think let's see this thing will come out next week. I don't know if you know this. So, uh I love Dan Flanick. 
Have you got a chance to talk to Dan much? He's a great dude. I haven't talked to him since the August the block conference. Since the since being being together, he is like he's a ball of fire. Right. He's sort of like a mini me. He's like me fifteen years ago. Um, he is launched. He's just launched the Youth Barbell Club that launches on April thirteenth, and it's really what we've sort of set up at Barbell Logic is a hub and spoke model. So it's the same thing that we do at Barbell Logic for adults, but it's sort of tailored to kids and he gets to run that, we call it hub and spoke. It's a spoke of what we already do. And so it launches April 13th. And we know that the primary people who are uh, potential clients for this are actually mom and dad, right? right? Cause how many 15 year old, 16 year old people actually sign themselves up for, for youth barbell club. And so um, you can go to barbellogic.com and you get information about that. You can, you can talk, Dan will call you on the phone. You can schedule a call with one of our coaches, but we have beta tested this now for about eight months and it is gangbusters for high school kids. And right now your high school kids are at home. They're probably not going back to school this year. They don't have access to their weight room. So the other thing that we've done is we've, we've just put out, it's actually on the website right now at Barbell Logic. If you just go to Barbell Logic at the top of the page, we've got a, we've got a home gym guide, like a guide to train at home, regardless of the training, regardless of the equipment that you have, which is pretty sweet. And we started running uh, a sale at Barbell Logic where you get 50% off your first month, and that's for premium or standard or club, which means club is $59 the first month, which is crazy. And if you sign up for premium or standard, it's $100. You get a $100 gift card to any for any equipment manufacturer you want. And for club, it's a $50 one. So you get basically your first month training is free. Uh, lots of great stuff there. Youth Barbell Club. We Listen, there's a part of me that feels sort of weird trying to present sales um the lower half okay can't the part can confirm kosher. feels real the weird non, the non-kosher part uh there's a part of me that sort of feels weird uh offering sales and, and look we're we're doing just fine as a business that's not what it's about it's about my people who are talking to you know block experience and sales calls and things like they're like listen there are a bunch of people who have been displaced from their gym and they're ready to train and they need coaches to help them and they're at home I understand that there's a bunch of you listening right now who've been laid off from your job and you don't have a way to pull the trigger on that. So I'm not talking to you. Please, that's not you. As a matter of fact, take care of your family, pay your, you know, buy your groceries, pay your mortgage, pay your rent first. But for those of you out there who have not been major financially uh, crushed by this and you're at home and you want to train, you want to come out of this quarantine in better shape than you went into it, we have options for you. At home, we have options that are low priced options with club and when we have options for your teenagers 13 to 19 years old is a pretty sweet gig and so we are trying to just fill a need if there's a need so if you have a need we'd love to help you out go to the website you can obviously always email uh block the block experience experience at barbell hyphen logic.com and we help you out for free no questions asked no hidden fees we don't try to hard sell you um and get that home gym guide that's totally free just a sweet ebook that our entire team put together uh, we'll send that to you. Get on there. We were going to open enrollment at online great books, much the same thing. Actually, we we're going to do it on April 13th. And I was like, yeah, we're not. Gonna Are do you? That. No, we're not. Uh, oh, you decided not to you no. decided to push it back. Yeah. So what we're going to do, I uh, got together with Carl and some others and we decided that we're going to do this thing. Uh, uh, cause we want people at home. We want them to do this. We want them to learn how to do it, what we do. So, uh, you can go to online, great books.com slash plague. And nice. we're gonna we're gonna run seminars on some some fun books. We're gonna do one on a Ender's Game, a little science fiction. One on a Wooster and Jeeves. It's a comedy. And then if you're a, a, a want to be a little more philosophical, we're gonna do one on a, uh, the loss of the creature by Walker Percy. And so Carl's gonna run one of those seminars. Our guy John Pascarella, who who's uh, fantastic, is gonna run one. And then Michelle Hawkins, who's my partner on the Music and Ideas podcast, is gonna run Ender's Game. I'm not gonna charge anything for it. Got to get your own nice. book. Uh, yep. But we're not going to charge anything for that. Just go to onlinegreatbooks.com slash plague. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. And uh, yeah, it just, it just doesn't seem right to... Uh, well, we didn't do any... Know, we, had, we did no sales in March. Nothing. And then we had a bunch of people that were like, man, we, we need something. We don't have anything. Right. And so we had, a, we had a leadership call the other day. And we're like, man, I want to be real careful being salesy with this thing. And at the same time, I want to be like, look, if it's something that you need and we've, we've put together all this home gym stuff, like, okay, it's here. It's here. And the home mm-hmm. gym e- ebook is free for the taking. It's, you know, it just builds up the email list, but the other stuff's like, okay, you know, we'll get you a gift card to, to work out at home, buy yourself a couple of kettlebells or kettlebell or loadable dumbbells or whatever. We can do that and we can start working. So 
Yeah, hopefully we'll get a bunch of people to to move around, right? And uh, hopefully we we'll get right. a bunch of people to uh, uh, to to read because you know what else are you going to do? That's right. Have a pity. Probably the best way you can spend your time on the quarantine is reading and training. Come out smarter and more jacked. Yeah, yeah. Who would want more than that? And uh, hey, Ryan, thanks for emailing. Email me. You can email me at scott at barbell-logic.com, and I will help you with this programming because you've been doing this for four years, and you're not as strong as me, and I'm old and broken. So let, let me help you out. We'll get you moving, okay? And without your Samson mustache now. Yeah. Shit. So gross. <laughs> it's food gets caught. Uh, it's, just hard, you know, it's just extra it's work. Like, just or if you work. sneeze or blow your nose, it just holds you can't, so much. You can't blow those snot, snot rockets, and you're like laying <laughs> there, awful. laying there trying to sleep. You're like inhaling your mustache and stuff. <laughs> it's no good. I'm glad it's gone. Um, <laughs> it was good while it lasted. But there is another Barbell Logic podcast. Send your questions, guys, to questions at barbell-logic.com, and we'll answer those somewhere between five to nine months after you send that in. That's right. Because uh, we have trouble getting to those in time. Also... Don't forget, you can always email questions at barbell-logic and get a little help with your programming. Or Ryan, you can email me, and I'll help you in any way I can. Get your get your ass moving. You gotta you gotta get you gotta get those gains going. Um, also, you guys are shut in and um, uh, need to start thinking about what it's going to be like when they open the door, the cage back up, and let you out. Right? That's right. What's it going to be like when we open the cage back up and uh, we get to get that new normal going? It's time to be laying your plans. That's right. We don't want them to just tell us on June 30th, which is when it's going to be. I don't know. <laughs> but you don't want them to say, okay, guys, Hey, listen, you moved up from October. Right, it's June 30th. moved up from October. No, no, they opened the cage on June 30th. Oh, okay, I get it. Um, and and then you don't have a plan. You need to have a plan. That's right. Uh, That's th- right. This, will, this will all... Um, this will all end at some point, and uh, we're going to fig- gonna have to figure out what to do. So start laying those plans. Yes, sir, because it's coming anyway. Thank you guys for listening, and we'll talk to you on Monday.